What's up guys, it's Lee here, the bartending photo boothing rental guy, and uh, I'm going live again. We're doing it again. The only way to get good at these lives is to keep going live. So uh, today, like every day, because I'm building these alphabet letters, I am painting some letters. So I've been mudding them, I've been painting them, doing them, you see vibes here. So these are just some of the letters I've created just to show you kind of how they look. I'll shut off the lights so you can see them in the dark. So they look pretty good. People like them. They're booking out. Um, I did a few bookings this morning and um, yeah, so all my bookings are done for the day. So I'm just going to work on letters now. So today I'm doing some painting. I thought I'd uh, paint a letter M with you guys. And just so you can see how I'm painting, what I'm using to paint them. Uh, if you're doing marquee letters, just showing you the painting process. So uh, let's get into it. So I'm going to throw these lights back on if that's all right. Okay, so first of all, we've got the M. This was one of the harder letters to build because uh, of these crazy angles. So it is mudded in certain locations. And if you're a good builder, it'd probably be easier for you. I am not a good builder, which proves that uh, if you're not a good builder, you can still build these letters. Anyways, painting them. So uh, I have, this is called Bear Marquee Paint. So this was the best stuff that I could find uh, for these types of letters. So I know renting these letters out that they get dirty and you want something that repels the dirt. So this white Bear Marquee Paint uh, is supposed to, uh, first of all, double coat. It's supposed to repel the dirt uh, and it drives super quick. It drives in like 10 minutes. Not even, so um, we're gonna get into it. I've got a little roller just from Dollarama, a uh, little roller there, and these ones work fantastic, and I'll show you why in a bit here. And then I've got the paint tray, and um, yeah, so just gonna open up the paint can here. Maybe we'll put it up on the next row so, so you can see that. That's a little better, you can see kind of what I'm doing. Okay, so paint can, marquee paint, bear, B-E-H-R, paint. And sorry, this video may be boring for some of you, but uh, it's all in the pursuit to persuade you to get into these letters and for me to get better at lives simultaneously. So we've got the paint here. I'm going to pour it in the tray and then uh, I'm going to show you my paint garment. You're probably going to laugh at this so we can laugh together. Okay, so paint's in the tray. And just put it over here. I'm going to give it a wipe so it doesn't get all over the floor. So I forgot. My painting gear. So I took this drop cloth and I put a nice little hole in the top of it. And I draped it over me. And I found this nice SPT2 extension cord and it's my belt. So I am now part of the Star Wars universe. Yeah. Okay, so. Perfect. I still can't see comments, so whoever gave that thumbs up, thank you. Thumbs up back to you. So, paint roller, marquee bear paint, painting the marquee letter M. So, I already pre-painted uh, the letters. So once I got the backs cut, I painted them, and then I painted the, uh, uh, the pieces before we put it together. But obviously, you need to repaint at certain points, especially after mudding. So my construction wasn't perfect, so there was a lot of imperfections all over the place, so I mudded. We'll mud in a separate video. But yeah, just uh, roll the paint on to start out on the front. So we're gonna roll it like that, but then we're gonna like dip, I'll show you here, this tray here. We're just gonna like dip the end of the brush in there, or the, the roller, and really get into those corners. So. You can just kind of squeeze it in there 
and then push it and it really seals that corner down. So if you, if you do that with these foam brushes, it works really, really nice. And then once you get all those corners, then you can kind of roll around. So just push it in there, get it all this bare marquee, like oh, it makes such a difference. It makes everything look nice and nice and white. So this is how I touch the letters up too. I mean, these things, when they go out, you're going to expect to touch them up probably two, two or three times a season if they're going out lots. So my love letters, which are in the back, those are the ones that uh, have went out all year for me. I touched them up twice and um, they looked pretty much back to brand new. So as long as you don't mind doing just a little bit of maintenance on them, then uh, these things will last for you, right? And uh, I know other rental companies in my area, um, one specifically that I work with, you know, every time that their letters get damaged, they have to go out and they have to order new ones, right? And so that's super annoying for them. Whereas when I have a little damage, like it's just a piece of wood. Like you can just, um, you can putty it, you can fill it, you can paint it. Um, with my other letters, I even put some gold trim around the front. I didn't like how they were white anymore, so I just like uh, pasted some gold trim on them. Uh, you know, with those plastic letters, you can't really do much. So, you know, wood has its ups and it has its downs. Uh, I'm a firm believer in if you build the product, then you can maintain the product. So, here's the product, this M. This M is something else. You know, after you're done watching this video, go online, look up marquee letters, and see if you can find many marquee letters that have this M with the dip in the middle. And, uh, you know, you'll, if you look closely at the M's, you'll notice that uh, a lot of companies, they use really crappy marquee M's. And so, the ones, these ones here that mean less design, uh, that was, we just had to have this M, so. Um, I don't know, I, I talked about that in my last video because uh, I thought it's so important. I don't know, you can maybe drop it in the comments if if that's important to you to have, you know, like a nice a nice looking letter. Um, we, we did some of our earlier variations. Uh, we've, we've kind of nixed some of the letters and we're getting new ones in. So we're constantly working on our listings uh, to make the letters good and yeah, so this is, this is me painting the letters with bare marquee paint. So the bare marquee paint costs about $80 Canadian per, um, per gallon. I couldn't find it in the five liter pails. I'm quite happy with the quality of the paint. You can probably just paint with anything if you want. Don't use spray paint. Uh, <laughs> When I first started out, you know, I was trying to touch everything up with spray paint and spray paint pretty much looks like garbage, right? So just don't go that route if, uh, just don't go that route. Um, what was I gonna say as well? So these letters are built with Baltic birch and that was on recommendation of like the wood store, but I had got the numbers cut out of pine, half inch pine, and it almost seemed like uh, the pine cut a little bit better on the CNC machine. There was less imperfections. I think the, the top layer of veneer on the pine seemed to be a little bit thicker. So if you're getting these letters cut, uh, when you're looking for the wood, just look at the quality and the thickness of the top layer. Cause these plywoods have different layers. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think there's 10 layers here. So um, you want the, the top layers to be nice and sanded, but you also want them to be thick for uh, less chipping during the CNC process. So that's one thing that I've learned through the process. So uh, for any of you just signing in right now, uh, these letters are three foot tall. Um, so I sell the plans, me and Les, TRB, TRB, TRB Vlogs. 
We sell these plans online and we encourage you to build these letters with us. So you don't have to have a rental company to start this business. You can just, they could just be like the one item that you rent. I, um, I use Bookable. It's an online booking system that works really nicely to track the inventory of these. So when people go onto my website, they just click their date and then they click whatever letters that they want and it shows availability and I don't have to do anything. Bookings just come in while I sleep and it's quite nice. However, I mean, all you'd have to do is put these online and people will just message you and you can tell them what's available. Like if you want to organize that way too. Um, but it's so popular that when you do get into this, just, you know, keep in the back of your head that it might be beneficial for you to, you know, upgrade if you plan on growing. Because right now I started out with 33 letters, so most of the alphabet, and then people started messaging me for numbers. So it's like, okay, now I have to add numbers. And, uh, you know, the, the requests just keep getting more and more. So. I, <laughs> if people are going to book this stuff, I'm going to be adding more stuff. So you might want to think about a program at some point. It's not whether this is going to be a successful business. It's um, how successful do you want to make it, right? The harder you market for it, the more bookings are going to come in. I myself don't have any problem marketing on other, I, okay, so I market through Google. I market through Facebook Marketplace. I market everywhere I can because I have the automated bookings, right? So if I was marketing in a whole bunch of different places, it would be hard to keep track of everything. However, wherever, whenever my leads come in through Facebook Marketplace or anything, I just have cookie cutter templates that say, hey, like go check us out online. Bookings are instant. Go check availability there. And then if people need phone support, then they call me and I can help them place their booking online while they're navigating the website. And it's working really nicely that way. Hope I didn't lose a lot of you. I don't know who's online. We got one person watching. That's okay. Yeah, so this is the marquee letters. This is how my days are filled, painting these letters. So in the mornings, uh, 10 a.m. is when my shop opens up and I come here about an hour early and prep my bookings for the day and then my people come and then I'm kind of free to do whatever. If I have deliveries, I schedule those for the afternoon and that's what I do in the afternoons. But uh, today, no bookings left for the day and I need to get these up and going. So this is how I'm, how I'm doing things. So what else can I say about these letters? So this M is probably one of the worst ones. I mean, for, like for our build wise, and you can see on the back here, like it's, it's pretty, pretty rough looking, but like when you start filling it in with the, the, the putty and the paint, it's, it's pretty good. And then, you know, when, when it's all said and done, those lights, like just, uh, you know, like look at it. Like that's just a great finished product. Looks good for photos. Um, did that just flicker? It was loose. Bizarre. Oh, I can see comments. Been following you for about a year now. I've gotten so many great ideas from you to grow my bartending business. Include, yes, include rentals with your bartending business. Uh, I myself am kind of on my way out of the bartending business, but... Um, I did it wrong for so long. Like the right thing that I did was, you know, I marketed myself as a bottle flipping bartender and I made a lot of money that way. However, um, you know, if I just had more add-ons in the past, like I used to just sub rent glassware and the only thing I had was my portable bars. And so I made a lot off my portable bars and my bartending service, but, uh, you know, hiring staff, I had to pay them good money to have good bartenders. So it was hard to make lots of money. So once I started getting into the photo booth and the party rental business, I realized that 
I was missing a big part of how, how much income I could make. So, um, and that's why I'm doing a party rental business now more so than bartending because it's just the, the money is, is, is fantastic. Like just, you know, this morning alone, uh, with my automated bookings, it may not seem like much, it's dead season, but I've already taken three orders this morning. I took two photo booth orders and I took an order for uh, a table and 10 chairs. And that already pays me, I, I can't remember how much it was, like six, 700 bucks for the day. Like, yes, please. So, uh, you know, if I can urge you with your bartending business, add whatever extras you can to make you, make you money, right? Uh, I wouldn't, one thing that I did was I got into portable bars, like a whole bunch of different options, and that will just limit you, right? Because portable bars, well, if, if you're only doing one bartending service a night, then only one of those bars is going to go out. So why not give them less options so that you can focus on other things? However, if you have a portable bar and then you have some glassware and then you know you have you know what other extras would be good with a bar who knows but uh you know whatever extras you want to do then um use those as add-ons instead of portable bars so that people can get them all as a package um also one thing i found with bartending is that um you know if you, if you have things that don't rent then to get them to rent out, you can put them inside packages and price them specifically, and then you can get them renting more. I rent a lot of items that way. Got four watchers, two lights. Awesome. How you guys like my paint gear? Um, yeah, so we're painting the M for anyone who's new here. I just lost one. Okay. Um, yeah, bare marquee paint. So if you're building these letters... Just, uh, you know, use a roller, use bare marquee paint. And, uh, yeah, I'm just going to continue this. And uh, thanks for living with me and just uh, letting me chat a little bit. I'm still getting used to uh, the lives. But uh, I think I'm going to just uh, cut it down there now, now that you've seen what I'm doing. And uh, stay tuned for my next video. I'm going to throw something, something good together for you. And uh, that's it. As always, you stay classy. We'll see you on the next one.